Good afternoon all. Well it's a reasonably bright, warm, sunny day today so uh, I thought I'd uh, come and do a garden project and this one needs updating. This is the 30 watt solar garden light, my giant monster solar garden light. It's got a 20 watt um, solar panel but a 30 watt LED which is on that heat sink and it's there. So what I want to do is take off the charge controller, which is the black box sitting on that wooden shelf, and replace it for this one, which has a timer, because my usage of this device wasn't what I thought it was going to be. What I tended to do was uh, let it come on when it got dark, and this is the light sensor um, to uh, detect when it gets dark. And then after a couple of hours, I'd come out and turn it off so that it wouldn't be on overnight because I kind of figured it might annoy the neighbours. So the new charge controller probably doesn't need the light sensor because it has a timer built in. That little two digit display there is where you set the time, one, two, three hours and so on. Uh, and in order to start that timer running it must have um, a sort of dusk detector which I guess is uh, derived from the solar panel voltage. So it'll actually end up being a much simpler system, just uh, the panel cable coming into the charge controller, that uh, being powered by the battery down at the bottom here, and then the LED that will come on and stay on for a certain amount of time. So this light sensor can go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing apart now, uh, clean it up a bit, and just swap out the controller. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this red wire here. I've disconnected the battery, obviously. I've got a feeling I put that red wire into the light sensor myself anyway but I'll need that red and black from the LED module uh, to go into the load output of the new charge controller. Now the old charge controller has these screw down terminals so I put uh, little ring terminals on each of the wires. The new controller isn't like that, it has um, this terminal block where the wires just poke in and uh, you screw that down so I'm just going to have to cut all these ring terminals off I think they're all quite corroded anyway so uh, might be a good idea to get rid of them. I'm pretty certain this uh, CMP 12 stroke 24 charge controller is still going to be okay so I'll keep that and uh, possibly use that on another project. The LED unit itself looks fine, uh, the electronics don't look like they've corroded in any way. They look fine. There might be the odd insect or two living in there, but that looks okay. It was reasonably well sheltered hanging on the underside of this uh, wooden platform. The LED also looks fine. And the fan, which is in here, that spins okay. So I think that all look uh, looks fine to me. Now on the new controller, this double digit display is very deeply recessed into the body and it's going to be hard to see, so I want to get it as far to this end as I can because that's the highest point, the platform sits here and then that's the highest point um, where the solar panel sits at its highest so I could get one of those mirrors on a stick just to see what the uh, display is saying so I think I'll put it there, oops I'll just mark that with a pencil and drill it and screw it so there are the uh, load connections going down to the LED module there. They go into the connections with the light bulb symbol there. And then all I need to do is get the um, crop clip leads here and put those into the center terminals for battery. And then my little connector here for the solar panel will go into the panel connections. I'll just do that now. Well, I must admit it's now a much simpler setup panel uh, battery connections and the load. There goes my operation manual. Um, now I plugged it in, connected the cables to the battery and if you press the little green button on the solar charge controller I can turn on and off manually the LED. So that's coming on, that's working fine and you may just be able to hear or even see that the fans also running. So that all seems to be working now I've just got to work out how to uh, set this timer thing up. And the manual does seem to confirm uh, that. It says here, manual mode. Regardless of the daytime or night, users can control the load on, load off by key press under this mode. So that's certainly borne out by uh, experience. 
because uh, it's night time at the moment for the charge controller because I haven't got the solar panel connected and that presumably is why the best thing it did was turn the load on but that's quite good you can manually switch it on and off I like that so what do we have here setting methods to press the button for three seconds the LED flashes and the system of the device is under mode of regulation after releasing the key the data in the LED changes along with every key press till matches with the model designated by customers what on earth is all that nonsense I think I'll just play with it until I work it out for myself so now I've connected the solar panel here the solar panel is catching some Sun and uh, we've got the Sun LED is on red the battery LED is flashing green but if I switch on the 30 watt LED it comes on and then goes off again so I'm not sure whether it's detecting that the um, battery has a low voltage it's quite possible this battery may have suffered by just not being used for ooh, a year or so I think I'll try another battery uh, right well it's taking a bit of time to work out what's going on here I think I've got it now the battery I think might be alright after all um, you have to put it in one of these modes by pressing and holding the button and mode 16 this one here is the manual mode you can only switch it on and off manually in mode 16 mode 17 is a test mode where you can check the operation uh, where the Sun goes down well I can simply do that by pulling the solar panel connection out um, it says that it's only supposed to stay on for 30 seconds so that doesn't appear to happen although it also says that after you do the test mode five times it reverts to mode zero that does happen Mode zero is dusk to dawn. The light is turn. Uh, light is on all night. That should say. I think light is on all night. And then all the other numbers are for the number of hours you want the thing to stay on. So let's put it in mode seventeen, test mode for a bit, and just give it a try. So I'm going to press and hold the button. Unfortunately, the display is not very bright. That's actually on. Oh yeah, you can just see seventeen there. So that's test mode. So now if I pull out the solar panel connection, this one here. Um, the light should come on so let's do that and yes the light comes on now that should go off after 30 seconds it doesn't appear to be doing that but I don't suppose it matters too much if I re-establish uh, daylight then the light goes off now if I do that five times it um, oops. Ah. yes it's all it's dropped out of mode 17 already and gone into mode Zero, zero. So what I want is mode 03, which is that. Can that be seen? Yes, mode 03. So that should be that um, it stays on for three hours after the sun goes down. Well, I think that's it. I think it's programmed. No, I got that wrong. Um, this thing that says in test mode there's a cancellation of a 30 second delay. What it means by that is that there isn't a 30 second delay in the normal mode. There's a 30 second delay, I presume, so that if someone stands in front of the panel, it doesn't trigger the light. Um, so it waits 30 seconds before making its decision, both for the turn on and the turn off. In test mode, there is no 30 second delay. It works instantly so that you can see the effect immediately. Um, I presume it uh, just stays on indefinitely. It also says here, um, the load is on with the optical signal and in reverse without the optical signal, the load is off. It doesn't appear to be, it appears to be the other way around. The load is off with the optical signal. In other words, if there's sunlight, the load is off. If there's no sunlight, the load is on. All very confusing, but you get there in the end. So now I just need to uh, put this solar panel back on the top, because you can only put that on the top because of my design. You can only put it back on when this uh, platform's not on there. So I'll do that now. Right, that's the solar panel uh, refitted and the controller on its platform. Now I can only see the first digit of the display. Um, oh, actually, you can see both digits if I hold my phone over it. But I was going to count uh, from the changeover from 09 to 10, but actually I can probably do it while looking at my phone screen. Let's give it a try. Oh, I'm not sure, that's quite tricky, that's 16. 17 zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, 3 that should be it now I think I need to press that and hold it to 
turn the zero 03 off. I think that's done it. That should be it, programmed. So, just need to wait now until it gets dark and uh, then check that the LED comes on and illuminates the uh, plinth at the bottom there and uh, check that it goes off after the requisite number of hours. So I'll come back tonight. Okay, it's dusk and I've just noticed that the light has come on. That looks pretty nice. So now I'm going to uh, just keep an eye on it from inside the house and uh, see whether it stays on for three hours or perhaps a bit less if the battery gives out before the full three hours because of course if the battery voltage gets low it should also uh, turn the load off but uh, yeah I like that that's a better neater solution and more tailored to the way I want to use this uh, incidentally if you want to watch the full four video series on how I originally built this thing I'll put little links up here up in this top right hand corner it's the YouTube card system to link to the original four videos so that you can uh, go through those if you want to have a look and so that's that project completed now I can leave that on throughout the summer and then also throughout the winter see how uh, effectively it works then cheerio